Welcome to another episode of Three Plastic Surgeons and a Fourth. As always, we have Dr. Salvatore Pacella uh, out of La Jolla, California. His uh, Instagram handle is at San Diego Plastic Surgery. Surgeon. Surgeon. Sorry, surgeon. That's right. Uh, Dr. Sam Jajurkar in Dallas, Texas. And his Instagram handle is at Sam Jajurkar. And Dr. Lawrence Tong, his Instagram handle is at Yorkville Plastic Surgery. And his location is Toronto, Canada. Um, the topic today was one that caught my eye uh, recently. And it was a New York Times article. It was some months ago, but it popped up on my feed just recently. Uh, and I'll read off a little excerpt of it. And then we'll, well, you know what? Let's do the disclaimer first, and then we'll get into it right uh, into that. But it's basically about cosmetic surgeries before big events like weddings, anniversaries, you know, big showcases and uh, the pros and this, cons of doing something like that. Uh, this is a, this is Texas. So don't forget quinceañeras as well. Oh, yeah. So, quinceañeras. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> All right. Whoa. So this show is not a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis or treatment. This show is for informational purposes only. Treatment and results may vary based upon the circumstances, situation, and medical judgment after appropriate discussion. Always seek the advice of your surgeon or other qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding medical care. And never disregard professional medical advice or delay seeking advice because of something you saw on this show. All Back right. to Thank you, you Dr. Very... Reed. Thank you. Quinceanera. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, so the article was written by Sarah uh, Lyon in May, and the topic, uh, the headline was Bridesmaids, Bubbly, and Botox. For some, undergoing a cosmetic procedure or two is an essential component of wedding prep. And it gave the example of a, of a person named Danielle McNamara, thought about getting a nose job. She was uh, reviewing photos from her wedding proposal uh, in 2021, and she then began seriously considering scheduling surgery. She was 36 years old. She said she wanted to look at images from her wedding and be like, oh, gosh, I wish and not say, oh, wish I wish I had done my nose sooner. So in February of the next year, she called do uh, Dr. Michael Kim, a do this, this kind of marketing always gets me, double board certified facial plastic surgeon in Portland and uh, had her surgery done or rhinoplasty in September and then had her... Um, wedding about a year and one month later in October, uh, uh, the following. So um, let's talk a little bit about what your experiences are like in terms of patients wanting to have procedures done. What do you do? How do you approach it? Um, what do you think about that? Um, well, what strikes me about that story is that that patient actually went in plenty of time to recover from her procedure. The fact that she went more than a year before her wedding shows that she was very well thought out and had planned this. That is not my typical experience. Um, <laughs> most of the time, patients will come to me and will say, my wedding is in two months. I want to get my nose done. And then you have to explain to them that with post-operative swelling, that's probably not a great idea. And you have to think about other things they might be able to do that, that will give them the results they want within the time frame that they have to recover. Yeah, I, I, I agree that that is probably the most important thing. And the uh, the time to recover is going to depend on what procedure a patient is considering. So rhinoplasty is definitely one of the longest ones. And, and you can, you know, move down the line to something less invasive, like, you know, some Botox and some fillers. Each procedure has, you know, a certain amount of time where you want the patient to be able to heal so that they'll look the best. For, for their wedding or for their pre-wedding photos. And so I think it's very important for us as plastic surgeons to be realistic with them and also even, and also let them know that even if, um, you know, we do this at the quote unquote, you know, proper amount of time, there can be, you know, complications which um, may impact how a patient looks uh, at the time of the surgery. I think rhinoplasty is actually, for me, for my practice, pretty popular and, I've been fairly fortunate in that I think that most of my patients who come in interested in something will plan out well ahead of time, like at about a year ahead of time for uh, rhinoplasty. But the other common thing that I, I see a lot of is um, just smaller procedures like uh, liposuction in the neck area. I think that that's actually 
a, a nice procedure, some sort of some mental liposuction or even a mini neck lift, which is a which is a procedure to sort of re-sculpt the neck. It doesn't involve skin removal like a neck lift because generally most patients who are uh, getting married are not in that age where you know they have loose skin. So I think some of these uh, procedures are 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 great. I, I would say my top two would be some sort of neck thing and and rhinoplasty, maybe lids sometimes, but generally younger patients don't have as much uh, need for that. Yeah, and I think um, you guys hit the nail on the head here. I think it's, you know, you divide below the neck and above the neck. And so if you want to have a breast augmentation four weeks before your wedding, you know, I, I don't necessarily see a problem with that given any rare issue, right? Um, so you still may be a little bit swollen, but, you know, that's going to kind of look good in the wedding gown, right? You want to do an abdominoplasty before your son's wedding, um, you know, four or six weeks, I think you should be good to go. A um, little lipo here and there, same thing. Any facial surgery, I mean, anywhere from three months to a year, I think is is critical. I think, you know, we, we just sort of talked about facelifts and, you know, not uncommonly do I see women who want to get a facelift done before a child's wedding or some sort of major event. And I say at, at the very minimum, particularly if your lower lids are involved, I would say six months, no question. And, you know, to me, the worst thing would be if a patient has an extended complication or some other issue, chemosis or lid malposition or something that is going to take a little bit of tweaking to, to, to optimize, you know, that, that's not something we want to be doing three days before the wedding. It's just not the idea. Yeah. A lot of times I find that we have to talk those patients into Botox, fillers, kind of just the best that we can do with the limited window of time that we have. But at least that way we know we're not going to make them have a deformity at the time of their wedding. I am, I must be very conservative because the most I'll do for anyone two to three months is usually like a filler type of procedure. And then if for any kind of surgical procedure, Maybe I'm just a Murphy's Law kind of person, but I always know if I'm under the gun from uh, from a time standpoint, it'll take double the amount of time for that particular patient to get to where they need to go. I don't know what it is. I probably uh, had had like one experience like that in the past, and now I'm just like overly cautious about it. But um, like for a breast dog or abdominoplasty, I'm giving them. Well, breast dog's probably a little faster, but I'm still giving them like four months, five months, just because I just want everything to settle and, you know, honeymoon and they're traveling and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. Like, I just want them not to, I don't want to worry. Uh, even tummy tucks and lipo, I, I'm giving myself, uh, even if they can recover faster, I'm giving myself six months as a surgeon to make sure everything's good. Uh, and then the facial stuff, I give myself even more time. So. I, I, maybe I'm just, uh, really, really, really conservative with it, but, but that's sort of where I sit with most of these things. You, you know, I'll tell you a, a major, major challenge I have in my practice is, um, uh, I take care of uh, a fair amount of, um, college kids. Okay. And they, you know, I may have operated on their parents before and, I want to get my nose done during the summer before I go to college because, you know, I'm starting my freshman year or I want so to, you're talking rest. high school kids, not college, high kids. school kids. Yeah. <laughs> but on the way to college or for example, somebody who's home for the summer. Right. And so, or breast reduction, that's a, that's a very common one we see in, you know, late high school, early college years. And, you know, think of the log logistics of this, right? So like they're away, you know, hours away in college, you know, you, you have to be evaluated. You have to have a consult. Then you have to have a pre-op appointment, actually, right? And so, you know, they may have a window of four to six weeks in the summertime or a short break for two weeks in the, in the holidays. It, it's exceptionally challenging to kind of map out exactly where they're going to do this. Also, a lot of them have like sports careers where they're, you know, they're trying to fit something in between a season. And so it, it takes a lot of the, my, I, I have to give kudos to my, coordinator christine she's a you know master of tetris and kind of putting this all together for patients what do you think about the psychology of changing your body or your aspect or some aspect of your face 
for an event, just an event, like this is a very short term goal type of thinking for patients when the consequences of the surgery are lifelong. So maybe all they're thinking about is that photo port, you know, album that they're going to have for their wedding. But have they really thought about everything else? Like, yes, maybe they would look better with, you know, C cup breasts uh, during in the wedding dress, but then maybe they haven't really thought it through living with C cup breasts for the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Uh, you know, do you encounter this type of issue or um, oh. how do you approach it? This, all, this reminds, all the time. This is a this is a this is an Instagram filter society we live in, right? So this is exactly what we deal with constantly. Yes. So go ahead. Did Sam. you guys did you guys ever see that article in the New York Times probably a decade ago where they talked about the 24 hour breast augmentation? Where this was, I think, a New York City driven phenomena where specifically for an event, in exactly the scenario that you're talking about, patients would come in. And, you know, the night before their big event would get their breast pumped full of saline nice. to give them like a cup size enhancement. Um, and the surgeons would sort of make the argument, you know, they may just want it for the event, but, you know, the, the long-term consequences of doing this, the little bit of stretching in the skin envelope that'll happen isn't a big deal. I've never, ever had a patient come ask me for that procedure. The only time that this procedure has ever been done in my practice was for the loser of a fantasy football league. Um, but, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You, you got to go into that a little bit more detail. <laughs> Can't because I was in the fantasy football league and we did it on a guy. It's a long story. <laughs> but anyway, was, was the guy's name Sam? No, no, no. <laughs> Anyways, it's, and, I mean, but that kind of that's sort of a response to your question where, yeah, a lot of times people aren't thinking about the long term consequences. They just want to look a particular way on that particular day. So their photos look a particular way and then they may not want that. I I have not encountered that, but the the point that Dr. Ree uh, brought out is uh, integral to all cosmetic surgery that we do in that you have to make sure that pa the patient is doing it for the right reason and they understand what the consequences are, both in the short term um, and the long term. And, you know, as as we practice, we get a little bit better in I you know, identifying uh, these things. And hopefully we, we won't get into a situation where we do an operation on a person and then they come to regret it. Fortunately, a lot of these things you can, you know, reverse a breast augmentation. You can take out um, an implant. You can take out if, if you want to. But yeah, I think that's very, very important to make sure that the patient understands what the implications are for having the surgery and making sure that they're not doing it just for, you know, you know, that event or that wedding or whatever it is. Let me uh, go on to another part of this article, which kind of bothered me a little bit, and I'd like to hear your comments about it. So they, they talk about doing um, less invasive treatments such as Botox but before weddings. And uh, he, here is what they said. For other brides, pre-wedding Botox is more than a skincare regimen. It's a group activity. While helping plan a close friend's February bachelorette party in Palm Springs, they suggested an afternoon of Botox and relaxation. The uh, um, person's uh, uh, sister is an aesthetic injector. And so, uh, and the other uh, relative running the party was a uh, children's nurse practitioner who runs a, a medical aesthetics practice. And they both administered Botox to 10 women uh, receiving injections while the rest of us hung in the pool, tanned, listened to music, and uh, caught up. So that scenario sounds very attractive. Uh, I, if I was a casual person just kind of reading this article, like that sounds like that would be something I would want to do for my wedding. Any comments about that? I, mean, I think we're all trying to figure out how to... You know, I think... Um... As long as the injectors are properly evaluating these patients and they're not drinking and not, you know, compromising themselves in any particular way, I don't have a huge problem with this. It sounds very familiar to, you know, Botox events and Botox parties that many people have. Obviously, you still have to go through the process of doing informed consent on people. 
making sure you do an appropriate evaluation of them. But assuming all those steps have been taken care of, why does it matter if you're waiting in a waiting room or waiting at a pool and catching up? Well, I, I would, my comment for that would be, <clears throat> you know, you said as long as all those things fall into place, I would hazard to guess that in a lot of these situations, it's, it's not, it's not the same. <laughs> They're not doing all those uh, steps. So that would be my sort of, um, worry about that because you, you, when you get the Botox and then you jump in the pool and you start swimming right afterwards, you know, we, we, I usually tell patients not, not to, you know, work out or exercise after, um, uh, after they've had Botox until the next day. You think they're exercising in the pool, not just hanging out? <laughs> you think they're swimming laps? I got, I got one point. I got one point here. I got one point here. You're all married to women, I assume, right? How, when was the last time your wife actually got her hair wet or took a, or went submerged underneath the pool? Exactly. Never. 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 <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, we're sitting there waist up. That's not a problem. You know, but you tell your patients they can't have sun after Botox, Larry? <laughs> they can't have what? <laughs> Can not be exposed to the sun after their Botox. Is that your fear? No. <laughs> no, that's, that's okay. I don't know. It just, it, it seems like there's going to be all and. I, I, I wouldn't, I mean, I, well, would you go to like somebody's house when they're having a bridal shower or whatever and start injecting people? I was about to ask you guys, what? because I've never done that. And nor would I honestly recommend that anyone do that. I feel like I, I don't take anything uh, lightly. And again, maybe I'm the conservative one here, but I like having everything that I need to do Botox or uh, in place. You know, if I go to some rando's house and or pool and set up all my stuff, like I don't feel like I'm really in control of what I'm doing here. And then if they're distracted and they're running around in the pool and drinking and having, you know, shots of tequila or whatnot or whatever, like to me, um, the only, none of this is helping me do my job better. It's only detracting from what I can do. So why would I be in a situation where like all these factors could make things worse? They're not helping me. They're only going to make things worse. So I would rather be like, listen, do your bridal shower, do your thing. I'll set you guys all up in, you know, at my office with, you know, whomever, but don't like, why would you combine the two? It, to me, it, it, it trivializes something that you know, admittedly is less risky than most of what we do. But, um, you know, you're, again, everything I do, I want to set myself up for success. And this is no setup for success in this, in this instance. I mean, to be devil's advocate here, the, the risks of Botox are migration of the product, which can cause, you know, some drooping of the brow, some bruising. It's not like filler where you can get, um, blindness or real serious things. I'm not going to call Botox a trivial procedure to use your term, but the potential risks, again, I'm all saying this with a caveat that the people doing the injections are not in the pool, not frolicking, you know, doing all what I, I don't have a huge problem with it. I, I've definitely, um, not always injected Botox in my own office. I've, I've definitely, you know, have done it in other situations. And as long as I have good lighting, I, I don't feel like it's that difficult of a thing to do. Yeah, I mean, I I personally wouldn't really deliver care in any other place in my office, just from a safety standpoint. But I, I I don't really see a major problem with them with it as long as you know there's no alcohol involved. This is at the start of the event. You know, informed consent is done. All the paperwork is done appropriately. You know, I mean. We delivered home care for wound patients at home. It's just, what, how is this yeah. really that much different? The, the, the bigger issue with me is I just don't want to do this. Yeah, well, right? no, no. Like there's no, there's no, there's no, 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 no yeah. Yeah, yeah, I just, I view this as something that would be not particularly enjoyable and not generally a good utilization of time. But like from, a, from, <laughs> a, so from that aspect, I don't do this regularly, but you know. How about, how about when? How about when you get together with your fantasy football buddies and inject each other's man boobs <laughs> with uh, saline? What, where, do, you, do you do that in your office or in the home <laughs> set? 
I, I don't wow, know what you're talking about. Good. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> don't know what you're well, talking about. <laughs> plausible, di- plausible deniability on that one there. <laughs> every, every fantasy football league has got to have a good outcome or a really bad outcome for the loser, right? So, yeah. Wow, those are, those are high high stakes. Those are, uh, yeah. uh, is there anything you won't do before somebody's wedding? Well, you're like, this is not something you should be doing before. Any Anything off the table for you guys? I, I think for injectables, um, if they're coming to you like a week before, I would be hesitant to recommend an injection because, you know, you can always get a bruise. And a bruise is something you it, – it just happens. And it's it's not something like 1% or 2%. It's, it's higher than that. So if a patient gets a bad bruise and then they, they have to get their – photos if it's the bride especially i generally wouldn't that that i wouldn't do i wouldn't inject anybody you know if they came in within a week maybe even two weeks uh before before their wedding i I feel comfortable with injectables two weeks beforehand but i agree L- less than two weeks you're taking or the risk reward ratio may not be favorable agree um i've i've you know are there things what I, some of the things that I would do, Sam, I, I think I'm less conservative than you in this regard. I've done breast augmentations three weeks before big events, body contouring surgery four to six weeks ahead of time. You know, a lot of times you'll have to warn the person that they might be having to wear shapewear underneath their wedding gown. But still, you know, particularly uh, in this age of bariatric surgery and GLP-1 agonists, and a lot of people have lost a bunch of weight, they really feel much more confident um, uh, you know, even with shapewear than, than they would have having a bunch of loose skin or extra fat. So I, I, I think the key is you have to figure out as a, as a doctor, what the risks are, if you do it too close to the particular, um, to, to the particular event, and then talk about the risk reward ratio with the patient. I mean, I'm more of the guy telling that person, Hey, listen, just wear some Spanx, put a couple falsies in and you're good to go for your photos. Like, but yeah, get I think tape. get some tape behind your neck and just like, that. That's right. The, yeah, that yeah. little Hollywood trick where you just like pull it all yeah. back and, you know, get some makeup and, you know, tell your dude to, uh, you know, work on the Photoshop a little bit and airbrush some of that stuff out. So there you go. Uh, but all right. Uh, really enlightening. I really appreciate your uh, thoughts uh, on all of this. And I think for anyone who's considering any, uh, procedures or treatments before a wedding. I think this is going to be super helpful for them. Uh, and just make sure you talk to your surgeon beforehand, someone you really trust and, and, uh, good luck. Congratulations. If you are out there getting uh, married or your quinceanera or, you know, loser, loser of your fantasy football, <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> good luck. All right. Thank you guys. All right. Take it easy. 